Good morning, brothers and sisters. Today I'm going to talk on the subject of why Babylon is not America, but will be rebuilt in the land of Shinar. A passage which is often overlooked in establishing the identification of Babylon is the passage which occupies the last half of Zechariah chapter 5. An angel shows Zechariah a basket containing a woman covered with a lead disc. The angel identifies the woman, quote, This is wickedness, Zechariah 5, verse 8. The basket is then transported away by two winged figures. When Zechariah asks where the basket is bound, the angel responds, To build a house for it in the land of Shinar. When it is ready, the basket will be set there on its base. Establishing the identity of this Babylon in the land of Shinar is key to understanding where this future city will be built, spoken of in Revelation 17 and 18. Zechariah 5, 5 through 11 says, Then the angel who was speaking with me went out and said to me, Lift up now your eyes and see what this is going forth. I said, What is it? And he said, This is the ephah going forth. Again, he said, This is their appearance in all the land. And behold, a lead cover was lifted up, and this is a woman sitting inside the ephah. Then he said, This is wickedness. And he threw her down into the middle of the ephah and cast the lead weight on its opening. Then I lifted up my eyes and looked, and there were two women coming out with their wind in their wings, and they had wings like the wings of a stork, and they lifted up the ephah between the earth and the heavens. I said to the angel who was speaking with me, Where are they taking the ephah? Then he said to me, To build a temple for her in the land of Shinar, and when it is prepared, she will be set there on her own pedestal. Notice in verse 11, it says, When this temple is prepared for wickedness, Babylon will be set there on her own pedestal in the land of Shinar. First, the prophet sees a ephah, or bath, which was the largest measure for dry goods amongst the Jews. It would, therefore, be the natural symbol for commerce. The angel equated the basket with their appearance meaning the appearance of the people of Israel. The eyes of the people were like an empty basket, craving to be filled with grain and material wealth. The people's appearance was visibly greedy. The ephah basket depicted the greedy desire of sinful people to idolize earthly goods and material riches. Next, We note that twice over it is said that the ephah goes forth, verses 5 and 6. Next, we are told that there was a woman concealed in the midst of the ephah, verse 7. We say concealed, for in verses 5 and 6, the woman is not seen. The lead cover had to be lifted before she could be seen. The writer is satisfied that this hidden woman in the ephah is the woman which is fully revealed in Revelation 17 and 18. Next, we are told that wickedness, lawlessness, was cast into the ephah before its cover was closed again. Then in what follows, we are shown this ephah with the woman and wickedness shut up, which goes forth to the land of Shinar, verse 11. The purpose for this is stated to be to build a house or a settled habitation. Finally, we are assured it shall be established and set there in the land of Shinar upon her own base. This vision or prophecy contains the seed which is afterwards explained and developed in such detail in Revelation 17 and 18 where it is shown that the house which is established for this system of commerce is Babylon the Great. John MacArthur comments on this section of Scripture, quote, Scripture often equates false religion and worldliness with spiritual adultery and harlotry. 
but all of that corruption will culminate in a final Babylon, which will be both the hub of global commerce and the seat of false religion. As John prophesied in Revelation 18 verse 2, she has become a dwelling place of demons and a prison of every unclean spirit, and a prison of every unclean bird, and a prison of every unclean and hateful beast. The future Babylon will be the climax and epicenter of ungodliness, seducing all the nations of the world as they eagerly engage in the false system of sensuality and secularism she represents. Despite its power and due to its wickedness, it will be thoroughly and suddenly destroyed by the judgment of God. Roughly 600 years before John described Babylon in the book of Revelation, the Lord showed Zechariah a similar vision also featuring the harlot of Babylon. In the book of Revelation, the harlot of Babylon, the final form of worldly false religion, is depicted sitting on a great beast out in the open, Revelation 17 verse 3. But in Zechariah's vision, the harlot of Babylon was still very small, illustrating that God had confined the spread of her wickedness at that time. So let's address the question of where is Babylon located in the last days? One of the helpful aspects of this passage is the mention made of the destination, quote, the land of Shinar. This locale is mentioned only a handful of times in the Old Testament and is clearly established as the region of Babel and Babylon. It points to the geographical location of Babel and later Babylon. Shinar was the name by which the Hebrews originally knew their lower Mesopotamian country where they so long dwelt, in which Abraham brought with him from Ur of the Chaldees. The transport of wickedness back to the land of Shinar is another piece of evidence that Babylon of the end is a rebuilt literal city in the same geographic location as Babel, the site of man's original rebellious city ruled by Nimrod. The history of man is to be brought full circle. In the same place where the first king rebelled against God, so too will the last king rule before his demise in the institution of the Millennial Kingdom. Barron, in his commentary on Zechariah, says, quote, It shows from actual facts and events which are before us the very strong probability that the land of Shinar, which in the past was so prominent in connection with the manifestation of evil on the part of man and of judgment on the part of God, that it stands as a memorial of proud ungodliness met by the visitation of righteous vengeance from above, will yet, as scripture forecasts, play a very important part in the consummation of human wickedness in the final anti-Christian apostasy, in which a godless Judaism and a corrupt, unbelieving Christianity will be united for the sake of the false peace and pomp and luxury and a humanitarian dissociated from God and the truth, which the system outwardly symbolized by the ephah will for a time minister to them, but which, as scripture also warns us, will end in the most terrible judgment which has yet befallen man upon the earth. Now, there are significant similarities between the woman in the basket and what John sees concerning Babylon in Revelation 17 and 18. The transport of the basket to the land of Shinar establishes the location of the end time Babylon. She will be right where God said. The correlation between Zechariah's vision and that of John is quite interesting. Look at this chart on the screen. In Zechariah 5, 5 through 11, it shows a woman sitting in a basket, and in Revelation, a woman sitting on the beast, seven mountains and many waters. In Zechariah 5, its emphasis is on commerce, a basket for measuring grain. In Revelation, the emphasis is also on commerce. 
In Zechariah, a woman's name is wickedness. In Revelation, the woman's name is Babylon the Great, mother of harlots and abominations of the earth. In Zechariah, the focus is on false worship, a temple which is built for the woman. And in Revelation, the focus is on false worship. And lastly, a woman is taken to Babylon, and the woman is called Babylon. John MacArthur comments on this specific location. The wicked angels, the two women, and the ephah were leaving the land of Israel to go to another location. This vision addressed God's plan, not merely for Israel, but also for the nations. The angel's response confirmed that this was happening according to God's sovereign purposes. Quote, For God has put it into their hearts to fulfill his purpose, to be of one mind and to give their kingdom to the beast, until the words of God are fulfilled. And the woman whom you saw is that great city which reigns over the kings of the earth. Revelation 17, 17 through 18. Then he said to me, to build a house for her in the land of Shinar, and when it is prepared, she will be set there on her own pedestal. To build a house for her denotes the construction of a pagan temple, which was fitting since the woman in the basket symbolized false religion. As a side note, as we see efforts made today in that same region of the world to build the Abrahamic houses, the Lion City of Saudi Arabia, and future prospects of the city of Neom, we understand the world's desire to build a city to unite the world and flaunt its wealth and power. Right now, these projects are only backed by a few nations. But when the time is right, the entire world, the Ten Horns, will pool their wealth to construct this final Babylon in the land of Shinar during the tribulation period. The Antichrist will be the old Nimrod, so to speak. So to sum it up, brothers and sisters, Babylon cannot be America because America will be swallowed up by the Ten Horns, world dominion. America will most likely have fallen due to a number of factors, economic collapse, moral collapse, civil unrest, a possible enemy invasion or a Trojan horse terrorist attack, and of course, the rapture of the church itself. What is left of America's wealth, land and people, and resources will be used to bolster the global economy and the world religion, thus giving all of its remaining influence to the Antichrist system. America is that final world power that stands in the way of the globalist vision. We can see the handwriting on the wall, brothers and sisters. America will fall, but it is not the Babylon of Revelation 17 and 18. Perhaps the same demonic forces that helped to destroy America will assist Satan in building that final city in which is said has become a dwelling place of demons, a prison for every foul spirit, and a cage for every unclean and hated bird. No, Babylon is not America, but that future headquarters for the final world empire spoken of in Daniel 7, located in the land of Shinar, is the fourth beast. The fourth beast shall be a fourth kingdom on earth, which shall be different from all other kingdoms, and shall devour the whole earth, trample it, and break it in pieces. Daniel 7, verse 23. In our next video, we will talk about how the Babylon of Revelation 17 and 18 are the same city. Maranatha.